Hello everybody, welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing video and build video on this Oklahoma Joe Longhorn Reverse Flow Smoker. I did open this box just to make sure the parts were in there and all the parts were. I'll show a picture here later. And over here you'll see you get your instruction book. And I wish they would show the tools, uh, recommended tools to use, but they don't. But the instructions are super easy, as you can see. I mean, there's nothing to it. You just really got to make sure that you don't over-tighten these bolts because they do not thread straight through, okay? You got to be very careful. If you over-tighten them, you will strip them. If you put them in wrong, you will strip them. I do not have that problem, but I've seen others that have. And as you guys know, there's the one that they're going to be picking up uh, here soon. Uh, I got to disassemble it, but I figure for video purposes, we are going to do an unboxing. And here, I wanted to show you the lean on that firebox I was telling you about. I believe I figured out what the problem is, and I'm sure this brand new one's going to do the same thing. Um, when it gets hot, this sidewall here, this metal gets weak, which is allowing this thing to droop. But I do believe that I have a simple fix for that. So stay tuned till the end of the video. And we will get to that. Okay, when you get your Longhorn in, it's very heavy. It claims to be 250 pounds, or 254 to be exact. You're gonna get your, you know, styrofoam things. And what I have learned is, I think it would be easier just to take a box cutter and just cut around the bottom of the box. See that? We're going to go around the whole thing and just lift this up because all your parts are inside the barrel. All your, uh, like your grates, your firebox, all that's inside there. So let me go ahead and get this pulled apart and we shall return. So what we're going to do here, uh, I already went around the whole outer edge with the box cutter. There's nothing underneath there so you don't have to worry about damage or nothing. And you just want to grab the box, pull her up. Just set it aside like that. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this. Keep in mind, guys, this thing is heavy. And the reason why you don't want to roll it down is because when this lid opens, you know, it could, you just don't want to damage it. Okay. Okay, now, break these off. Okay, because I'm going to need a hand, and it's recommended you get a hand, uh, so you don't blow your back out. Like I said, this thing is it's awkward, uh, you know, as far as weight distribution. And, um, but we will return. I'll be, I'll be back. So once you get your box undone, all the styrofoam off the sides, now we can go ahead and lift up the lid. And there you go. And that's where all your goodies are at. So we're going to go ahead and clear this out, take some weight off this baby, and lift this barrel up off this. Here's everything you're going to find inside that main cooking chamber. Here you'll see you got some racks, you got your stack here, miscellaneous nuts and bolts, I believe this one here is the, or maybe these are the wheels, the steel wheels, heavy duty wheels too. Um, this I believe they're gauges and miscellaneous stuff. Here's your charcoal basket, which I will talk to you guys about this a little more do not don't put wood in there guys it, this thing will warp like crazy and but it will form itself back because mine warped like crazy and it come back and i couldn't believe it reshaped itself um but it's it's fairly decent basket there's your front uh rack for the front of the main chamber that'll be your bottom rack for the uh well, as you can see there where i stack my wood on um over there you'll see those are the plates to make it a reverse flow it's the diffuser plate your grease catcher um the, it has it has some pretty good functions there you got your instruction book here's your firebox here you have to put these two together then over here is your main chamber i get you a look on the inside okay this is your firebox side here. 
This is for your top stack. Or you have an optional stack that you could put here. Well, it doesn't come with it. You have to switch it out from over there. And you um, can have a regular offset that way. In one of the boxes, you're going to get all your nuts and bolts and washers. Here you're going to have your handles for your firebox and for your main chamber. Here is a temp gauge that will go on the lid. And keep in mind that I'll show you here. This here has a plug on it which unscrews. So this is a cap there because they include one thermometer for this. You could choose whichever side you want or you could do what I did and purchase uh, these uh, River Country uh, temp gauges. They fit in there just fine. And I may, uh, I'm going to end up putting this one on the new one. Uh, and as you can see, the cap was originally here. You just remove the cap, install your gauge. It's as simple as that, guys. All right, first thing you want to do here is roll your barrel pretty much upside down. And be careful for the lid. Just let it rest down there. It'll be fine. Because what we're going to do here is install the legs. And the legs come in this box here, as you can see. And I'm going to tell you guys, this thing has been very well packed. I mean, I'm very impressed with the shipment and everything. The only problem is the box that it comes in. Because it's so heavy, uh, make sure you store that box in a dry area because the bottom will rip out on you. It's happened to a couple of mine, so just be, keep that in mind. All right, so went ahead and unwrapped all them legs. And as you can see... They just pop in and out like that. And as you can see, there's no threads. You have a hole here, but no threads there. And also, I forgot to mention, save one of your wedges, um, or, you know, your packing, and just put a piece of styrofoam, it looks like a wedge, and just tuck it there, because once you put these legs on it, it will want to roll over. Uh, here, you'll see these are for the wheels that will be mounted later, and then, of course, the other side. And if you're wondering what this little hook thing here is, when it's flipped up, that's where you can hang you a drip bucket. And no, it does not come with that grease catcher. You have to buy that separately. Uh, it is an Oklahoma Joe bucket. I think for the price of this thing, they should have included. I mean, come on, guys. You're paying 600 bucks for an offset. You, you should at least get that drip bucket. So the first step, you're supposed to install your, light, your uh, wheels on there. I find it a little bit easier to just put the legs, uh, I'm sorry, here they are, and just put the legs where they go and then install them like that. It's a little bit easier, for, at least for me. Here in your screws and your you know, bolts and all that, um, they're lettered A, B, C, D, E. Very easy. You come over here you know, to when you're starting your wheels here, which I told you I put mine already on. Uh, you could do it like this, whatever. So here you have B and E. Uh, that would be your washer and your clip there. So what we're going to do is I already had put the one washer here. I'm going to go ahead put the wheel on. Then we'll install. I got one hand, guys. Should have had you do this, Mr. Vinny. And then we'll install the clip. There you go. Simple as that. I'm going to go ahead and continue to do the other side, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, here's the next page, page 14. Here we're going to install these nuts, or these bolts here. And has, these are the H4, and if you flip your screws upside down, your letter pattern is still there. So as you can see, these are the H's. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, and keep in mind, before you put these screws in, uh, try to line up these wheels as level as you can. They don't have to be perfect. You'll see why in the next step. So all you're going to do is start your screw, and you're going to hand tighten all of them. Do not tighten them down. And you're going to see they go about right there. Okay, and that's about it. And when you go, when you do go to tighten them, you want to just snug them. And the reason why you don't fully tighten them now is because when you put that bottom rack on. It, when you set it up and it settles itself out, when you stand it upright, uh, it'll level itself out. Then you're able to tighten them. Just want to let you guys know, do not tighten any of the leg bolts. And remember, why, I don't know, but I'll show you here real quick. This is the best angle I got. 
it's solid. See, I'll go ahead and put these bolts down here. There's no hole. So another thing on this side, kind of line it up as straight as you can. Like I said, when you get to the next step, when you go to stand it up, everything will level out. Let me go ahead and get these bolts in and we'll go on to the next step. So in our next step, page 15, we're going to go ahead and install the bottom rack. And again, as you can see, the H. So I'm going to grab however many I need. It says here I need times four. And as you can see here, they go here. So I will return when I have this rack installed. All right, so we got the bottom rack installed. And this is why you don't tighten the bottom ones here, okay? Remember the bottom ones I told you not to tighten? Because when you go to line up the holes for this bottom rack, and make sure you flip this rack upside down, that one's right side up. This one is upside down, which is what you want because we're installing it upside down. Here, just hand tighten these again. Do not tighten any of these bolts in these two steps with the legs in this rack. Now here we're going to move on to the next step, which is page 16, and we're going to start assembling the firebox after we lift this up and let it settle, and then we could tighten up the bolts. So once you've completed step four of the instruction book, um, you could go ahead, like I said, you could stand this straight up and what'll happen is everything will start lining up. And be very important to straighten your wheels. Make sure everything's straight. Find you a straight edge or just eyeball it and make sure that this is straight before you tighten up any of your bolts. And the reason why I'm telling you that, I'll show you. Because I didn't do it there. And look how crooked my leg is there. Now, it's as simple as loosening the bolts and just turning the cylinder straight. It's not a big deal. But why mess with it twice? Then I have to remove all the wood. It does not, um, it doesn't mess with the stabilization of the actual unit. It just, it's not right. Uh, they're coming to pick it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But here's what you want. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up all the bolts. And you just snug them. Don't tighten them too tight because you will strip these bolts out just warning you. So we're going to go ahead and get the firebox, which I believe is step 5. As you can see here, page 16. Uh, so we're going to get this assembled and move on to 6. And before I do this, I got something to show you guys. I am going to seal this off. I am not using any RTV or high temp silicon. Uh, I think it's, I mean, no offense, I think it's ugly. It's not going to hurt nothing. Um, I've had really good experience. Well, I should say with the lava lock uh, gasket there. Uh, but it does not work very well on the top edge. And as you can see, the flames, this thing started warping, but I know I could bend that straight on this one. Uh, it seems like the side's holding up pretty well. This is okay. Uh, I have several cooks on this thing now. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Just, uh, I'll show you guys the gasket that we're going to use uh, throughout this entire thing. Here we're going to move on to step five. And you're going to grab your A and F. And uh, you'll need four of each. Okay. And this goes right on top of the door. Just like this. I'm going to go ahead and pop the bolts in and we will return. Alright, just a little tip guys. When you are tightening all the bolts, which you'll have a bolt on each end. You can see there. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But you got a bolt there and they all require a 9 16 wrench. And when you're tightening them all up, start out with the legs, okay? And just snug them. Don't over tighten them because you will strip them out. All right, and what will happen when you tighten up the legs Kind of hold your wheel straight because it may start to, to move on you. Just hold it straight, but always start at the top Then do your bottom rack and that'll put it all in place So we're going to go ahead and get started on this firebox Which as you can see we had started Here this piece of uh, cardboard here uh, is part of your packaging of the Oklahoma Joe so all I did was just propped it up there and started the screws. And you can see here, 
this here you run the screw ups up underneath the lid and then your nut and here in the back side of your box the screws go down and then they you'll have your nut there but i just used uh that cardboard to brace the the lid up and i highly suggest that you have two people uh to install this because this baby is pretty heavy uh, i also like to mention that at least when you're flipping it up okay at least when you're flipping this thing up before you tighten your bolts definitely have somebody help you because uh, you gotta remember all this stuff is loose in the beginning and when you roll it over the last thing you want to do is tumble this thing and you're just going to be in a world of hurt so as you can see we got this deflector plate on and all you'll need is a 7 16 uh wrench and a phillips screwdriver all that's done here like i showed you before you lift the lid up you tighten that nut tighten that nut and and here you set your open end box of the 7 16 wrench on that nut and on the back side tighten it with your phillips screwdriver okay what you want to do with this stuff is take the bottom half your bottom half which has your uh, door here okay um, and what you want to do is get you some rubbing alcohol and I'm going to use this stuff here from Island Outdoor it's their uh, fire black gasket I was hearing some good things about it um, I didn't want to purchase the lava lock because I already have it on that one and it's everything that's sealed is used with that gray uh, lava lock like I said this here I heard is some really good stuff we're gonna try it out if it burns out oh well we'll just I guess replace it with new no big deal so what you want to do is grab yourself a paper towel grab your rubbing alcohol and we're going to clean this outer edge here you want to do that to get the maximum adhesive out of this um, gasket as you can see here from the factory that looks like oil right here you want to get all that off here all I did was took some of the rubbing alcohol here and put it on this paper towel and you just want to wipe down all the edges now I'm going to do this off camera to and I'm not sure my uh, I must have used all the storage in my phone so I had to delete some videos uh, anyway all you want to do like I said um, just take a paper towel some rubbing alcohol go around your edges real nice like I did and you'll see you'll pick up some gunk so let's go ahead and get this gasket installed so what you want to do for this step <clears throat> is just get your gasket material lay the, your, uh, the white side the tape side down and just line it up from this corner to this corner and then all you're going to do is take your scissors and just go ahead and cut it just like that and as you can see once I peel this backing off, which I'll do right now. I'm going to go ahead and lay it on there. You want to be very careful not to stretch it. Just set it on there. Just kind of lay it down. Just like that. Then all you're going to do is just press it down. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and complete this, uh, the rest of this firebox, and I'll get back to you. All right, so what you want to do now is there's two holes. There's one here, here, and then there's two, one there, and one there. So what you want to do is take you a sharp razor blade, and you're going to find the hole, and you're just going to put in a cross here, like this, and this. You're going to push down. So I'll find the hole, and I'm doing this left-handed. I'm a right-hander. And you find a hole and stick it in there and push down and then flip your blade and go this way that's exactly what i did to that box uh and the bolts held up fine they go through you won't have to worry about nothing 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut those four holes out and get that top of that lid on here bolted on. After that, we're going to come here. Before we bolt it on, I'm going to take that rubbing alcohol and I'm going to clean out this outer edge. And we're going to put that same seal around this part right here. Here you'll see I put the top part here, put them together here at the bottom. I like the looks of that. Looks nice, the black. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this thing bolted on and we'll return. Here are the four bolts. You have one here, here, and then back on this side here, there, and there. As you see, it's just done bolt, 7 16 uh, Phillips, I mean, a 7 16 wrench with a Phillips screwdriver is all you need for that. And there you go. So let's go ahead and get started by cleaning up the edges here and on the other side, and we're going to go ahead and get that gasket on there. So what I want to show you here with the gasket is to go ahead and cut a 45 degree angle, as you can see there. Oops, you're gonna get it on there and you're gonna go right below the bolts, okay? So line up your piece. So obviously your next cuts here on the side, you're gonna cut another 45 and they're going to connect together. Just stay under the bolts for this process. And you're gonna do this all the way around. Okay, once you get your gasket installed, it should look a little bit like this. You just want to sit here and keep it right to this slip here all the way around trying to avoid the bolt holes that's not a big deal there because these holes are closer and these are a little bit higher okay we're going to go ahead and uh, get this firebox mounted all right we finished step six so we're going to move on to step seven and you're going to see it's going to take a couple guys and it will you can see how you got to run your bolts through it's not very hard to do when I get this installed, we'll go to the next step. All right, so I have the firebox installed, as you can see. But you can't really see that gasket because it's um, smashed in there really good. Uh, and it's also black, so it'll be a little hard to tell. I'll go ahead and open this up for you. Show you how the bolts go in. Now, keep in mind, have somebody holding the firebox up as another one drives the two upper bolts in to make it easier and the guy lifting you'll want to do this with the door open at first you can have it closed I've tried it like that too before I just find it easier when the door is open trying to lift it so as you can see you got your Phillips head here or 9 16 wrench uh, the nuts on this side 9 16 so far very very easy to build Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which would be step number eight. And this is going to be installing the handles. Okay, as you can see here, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just get the correct nuts and bolts. It takes a, that same Phillips screwdriver you've been using throughout this whole build. And the 7 16 wrench. It's easier to have one guy on the back side to hold the handle and put a couple screws in for you while you just get them all uh, snug and you just go right back behind one guy hold the Phillips head on this side and the other guy tighten on this side just makes it a lot smoother over here same thing for the lid there you go and I'm pretty sure the quality of these appear to be just like a chrome plating or something I can't be for certain that's stainless. I don't think it is. I mean, they wouldn't even give you a, you know, a toolkit with this package, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, but not a big deal. Uh, so far, your main tools are, you know, a pair of scissors, nine sixteenths wrench, and a seven sixteenths wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, um, and some scissors for cutting the, the gasket. So, okay, so we're gonna have to move on here to step number nine. And this is going to be installing the stack and the cap for the optional where you can move the stack over to here to turn it into a regular offset. I'm going to keep it as a reverse flow. So, oh, and here you got your handle so you can lift it up and move it around. We're going to go ahead and get that installed and see you in a second. All right, so we're finished up with step nine. Very simple. This is the cap that you push in here. You have a bolt here that does not go all the way through. All you want to do is snug it. Do not tighten it. 
Uh, moving on all the way over here, you got your handle. Okay. You just got two bolts here. You got one there and then one over there. And that where you could just lift it up and move it anywhere you want. The last step of step nine is the stack. So as you can see, all it is is the same thing with the cap. Just got a bolt there. And you would think it would leak pretty bad out of that gap. But I haven't had a problem with it leaking out of there from the other one. You know, when you first fire it up, you see all the smoke. I never see it coming out the back. So I'm not going to bother sealing this. But if I do have an issue, I will. So all you want to do is make sure your stack is straight. Okay. Make sure it's straight. And just snug this up. All right. What we got to do here now, we're going to move on to step 10. And step 10 is going to be the front rack, which is a nothing to do. Also, we're going to install our... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, we're also going to install our gauge. Since I have an extra gauge, I'm going to go ahead and use... I'm going to take that plug out and I'm going to add a gauge over here. And it'll be the ones that came with the Oklahoma Joe. As I told you before, these are aftermarket. Okay? So I'm just going to take the one that came with this smoker and the one that came with this new one, this replacement, uh, and put them both in. Okay. Let's go ahead and install these gauges here. I'd like to give you guys a little tip on how to install these. Here you can see this is the way it comes factory. Here it has the plug. All you would need is just an adjustable wrench. Yours might be loose, but it's just nothing but a simple plug. So what we're going to do is you take your gauge, you leave that nut on, okay? And what you're going to do is screw it in there, okay? Let's get it screwed in there. And then you're probably thinking, well, man, if you tighten it, it's, you want it straight, right? So here, we're going to put it right here. I'm going to get the other one installed. Now, the River Countries are the same, but they come with a fat washer. Uh, also, the River Countries, uh, you could um, uh, adjust them. These are not adjustable. So what you want to do from here, you know, get it where you want it. You know, back it off, whatever. Get it straight. I kind of like mine with the 150 start there. And then what you're going to do, which I can't do this one-handed, but you see that nut there? You're going to run that nut straight down. Now what I like about, if you can see on the river countries, they have that big washer that comes with them. I think it acts as a nice seal. Anyway, probably not necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten, tighten this nut right here down to here with an with a adjustable wrench. And that will lock this uh, temp gauge in place. All right. So it looks like we about finished this grill off. Uh, the last thing we need to do is take our rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to go ahead and put that black seal on both edges. Yes, I'm going to go across the top on this one. Uh, some people had better luck without this gasket on top and just doing the sides and the bottom. Well, I peeled the one off the original one to see if, and it didn't work out for me. You know, because it does, it seems like it raises the, the lip when you close the door because it mashes, the back of the door mashes on the gasket there. And it kind of raises it up. So we'll see. So here's the gap right here. So when I install that gasket, it might come up, you know, about to here or so. But we'll see. Maybe not. Here's the back side of your gauges. As you can see why that adjuster nut stays at the top is because there's no way that you're going to get the nut in them holes. Just a quick update on these gauges. You do not need an adjustable wrench down there. Now, if you have a wrench thin enough to tighten this bottom nut off, okay, uh, that's fine. Well, I didn't have one available, so all I did was use my hands and turn this dial counterclockwise. Okay, with my hand, I just turned it like a hair, maybe about a quarter inch. Then I took the nut by hand and tightened it by hand and just took the gauge itself and turned it and it locked in. It tightened itself without using any tools at all. So I didn't mention earlier in the video that you're going to have to order two of these, uh, the gasket here. 
and uh, the size is a half inch uh, by eighth, okay? And I'm pretty sure that this stuff is probably the same as the Lava Lock, just a different color, which I like the black a lot better. But either way, you're gonna need to buy two of these, okay? From islandoutdoorllc.com. And of course, I believe I picked these up on Amazon. And if you're curious of what this little piece, this is the leftover piece from when we did the firebox, where the firebox uh, connects the main chamber. And I was able to get two, two full strips. I did the top, and I did the whole bottom. Okay, so I have this left over. Um, now over here, I want to show you guys when you're installing this, get it all the way up to that top lip. You see that lip right there? Get this gasket tight to that edge there. And I'm going to tell you right now, peeling off the backing on this probably takes longer to build this whole smoker. No exaggeration. So installing is pretty easy, self-explanatory. You know, I showed you guys how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to get the two sides here. I'm going to also do the firebox. And do not, and remember, well here, let me show you here. See how that fits like that? Nice and tight. That's the way you're going to want it. Okay, and very important to use your rubbing alcohol before you apply any of this sticky tape. Because otherwise, where the factory oils were left on here, it's not going to stick so good. All right, so we went ahead and finished up all the seals. As you can see. And over here in the firebox, we got this completed. I didn't push that up. There we go. I didn't push it down tight enough. Of course, that's where the door was hitting right there, but that's fine. It makes a good seal. But either way, there you have it. I'd like to show you. Also, you're probably wondering, well, what about the uh, firebox door? Well, but my experience with that one is that. You don't need to seal this. You don't need to weld any flanges in there. Yeah, it's got an air leak, but I'm going to tell you right now, when you're burning wood, I promise you, you're going to have this door open, especially if there's no wind. So you want to try to position your smoker, if you can, uh, directly into the, uh, let the wind blow inside here to keep your fire hot. Uh, get plenty of oxygen in there. Uh, and how I control mine is normally, it just all depends on what my gauge is running. So... Um, sometimes I'll have it wide open, uh, you know, when I add fresh wood, uh, or I don't have to do it with pre-lit charcoal because I don't put, uh, I'll explain that later. So here, anyway, uh, you don't have to worry about sealing this, uh, door, okay? Just trust me on that. Uh, then over here, hey Vinny, can you hand me that fire, uh, that, well here, we'll do that later. So anyway, there's, uh, the Oklahoma Joe, the only thing mods that we've done so far to it is the gasket around the main areas you're going to want them at and we added an extra gauge temp gauge i should say so uh, stay tuned we're going to go ahead and uh go to step 11 which is installing the grates very easy to do there's your charcoal basket that is not for wood i'm telling you it'll warp doesn't do a great job. I'll show you how, to, how I set it up anyway. Uh, and here's here's your um, the reverse flow plates or your tuning. Okay, I do apologize. I ran out of memory again. I had to delete some older videos out of my phone so I could make more room. But here are your plates here. They're not tunable because they interlock with each other, as you can see here. When I get them installed, I'll show you how they go on. So we're going to go ahead and finish up step 11. By installing the grates which I am not going to set it up in that pattern I am NOT going to use these on the bottom but I am going to use over here in 13 the main cooking grates obviously okay and then we'll come down here to step 14 and show you how I use this firebox or the charcoal box okay well here's what makes it a reverse flow uh, all you got to do when you're putting these plates in now you have the option to put those uh, if you wanted to put them charcoal grates there uh, and the bottom there and you wanted to grill off of them or whatever yeah, probably put a water pan in there you know if you want to set a water pan on top if you wanted to I wouldn't do it but anyway 
Uh, these are the plates. Uh, they're more or less trays that capture the grease uh, from your foods. And you can see the little holes there. And if you pay careful attention, you see those little tabs there? Okay, now you see this tab? Now when I go to install this next one, you'll see you just have to line it up. And it drops right in, okay? And then for the last one, you'll know because it's got these like vent thingies. Or just look at the pictures on it. You'll figure it out because they're only going to go in one way. So there you go. Now the plates are installed. And the concept of the reverse flow is to build your fire in your firebox. Your heat will go into that hole and it'll go up and under that plate there all the way to the other side and comes out of here. And then the smoke comes up and rolls across your meat and then out of the stack. All right, so here, um, this is how you would normally set up your firebox. You'd put one small grate down there and your cooking rack up on the top. You know, and of course you could sear out of this box if you'd like to. Uh, you could like smoke your meats if you want to do reverse sear, uh, you know, and then take it over to the fire grate, which I've done, it works great. Uh, or just for searing burgers and hot dogs, um, works out pretty good. But I'm gonna show you how I like to run this smoker. Okay, so this is how they recommend you do it. And Vinny, show them inside here. And you can see your gap here. That's about, I don't know, I guess two inches. Just keep it in there. What I'm gonna do is lift this up and turn it sideways, or turn it the opposite way. And now you're gonna start seeing a larger gap, okay? Then I'm gonna take the other two that go into the main chamber. I'm gonna stack it right over the top of that, okay? Then I'm gonna take the third rack and I'm gonna place it uh, the opposite, crisscross, like how they want you to lay it on top of this. Now, what you'll notice, is I got a nice crisscross pattern for my ambers. Now, I build my wood right on top of this, uh, the way I have it set up right now. But here, I also, and it'd be great for searing as well, but here as well, when you slip the charcoal basket in, you have even more for your ambers, you know, to stay, and they'll still fall through. And as you can see, I just push it over to the left, closest to the main chamber. That way I got room here for airflow. And as you can see, plenty of room to get under there with a tool to scrape out your ashes. Almost forgot to show you guys how the racks go in. They're very simple. They just lay on top of these plates. You'll have one um, rack that'll go in to the, your smaller rack goes to the right, and then your left one goes over this, this rack here stays over to the left. It's a larger rack. You'll see it uh, when you guys open it up. So there you have it. The Longhorn Reverse Flow Smoker. We're also going to season this thing up. Very important before you start any fire in the firebox is to make sure to remove this sticker. It shouldn't leave any glue behind. Uh, my other one didn't do it. And we're just going to go ahead and take off this here. Okay. All right. All right, stay tuned, guys. I'm going to show you how I season the Oklahoma Joe and all my smokers. So here we got some cheap, um, just regular canola oil on a spray can. You can pick these up at the dollar store. They're very cheap. And all you want to do is uh, coat all the metal. Get everything, the top of your door. You want your whole firebox. You can do this great, which I will. I did the other one. I don't think it made a difference because I believe it's just going to burn off anyway. That's the last thing I do. So basically, just go ahead and just put an even coat all the way around it. Just like that. Don't worry about your temp gauges. Okay, and then you want to get on the inside. And the reason why you want to season it last is you don't want to get any oil before you put your seals on that's why I put the seals on first and then apply the oil okay we are now seasoned well we have the spray on there as you can see there's a nice you know thin layer you don't want to go too heavy you don't want it to spray it to where it starts dripping because it will stick like that not that it matters and what you want to do is go ahead and uh, put your plates back in put your grill racks on 
don't worry about seasoning any of this um, the grates because this is this porcelain coated steel racks there's no need to season them at all then over here to the firebox as you can see it's seasoned the basket season the grates below are seasoned the outside of the store as you can see in here I'm gonna show you something else how I'm gonna fire it up is with this weed dragon I don't know if any of you guys I'm sure some of you guys heard about this thing it's okay I mean it's you know it was a hundred and something dollars uh, with the valve here which if I had to buy another one for whatever reason I would just I wouldn't get it with the valve um, I mean it doesn't matter I guess it's uh because if you have this open wide open this trigger doesn't do anything for you so basically you would just crack this open take your striker or a long lighter and then you light it and just have it just a little flame coming out of there and then this thing will activate it but I've had weed burners that had much more power but you don't really need that when you're starting up your coals I like the fact that it has a thin barrel okay it's not like the big like I don't know if that's a three inch barrel that come on the bigger ones uh, if you do buy it be careful how you store it okay because you see how the paint chips and I take extremely good care of my stuff uh, so it, I mean in my opinion it's cheaply painted uh, but the product works um, and I guess that's good it's good enough there uh, the kit mine was 120 bucks came with the striker I believe this valve was extra I couldn't remember if it was extra 20 bucks or whatever it was but it does the job okay and I just hooked it up to my propane tank nothing big okay now over here you're gonna see that I have a smoky or a, a smoky Joe I just took the lid and all the grates out now you could put a grate in there if you'd like and collect the ambers if you want to just grill some quick uh, hot dogs out of it or whatever so here you're gonna see I got a little, a little craftsman it's a what, two and a quarter uh, jack stand for a car you'll stand back and look and you'll see that it's pretty straight it's not like leaning Okay, my box is a little crooked because the way I got my grates in there, but whatever. So, this is my plan. Because on the original one, okay, it droops pretty bad. I have a way possibly to fix this, and that's by getting a hot fire inside that box and then taking a, a car jack and jack it up on the end to see if it would blow it back in. And if it did, just put a floor jack. But why would I do all that work when they're coming to take it anyway? So back over to this one. I'm going to go ahead and put a split in here. And a lot of you guys, you know, may not like it. You know, it's a stick burner. Why don't you just use all wood? Well, I have. Uh, and it's, I mean, it works great. Okay, so what we're going to do is just fill up a charcoal chimney. I like using the Weber uh, briquettes because they seem to burn for a long time and they burn really nice I would use lump coal but I don't have any charcoal works just fine so what I'm going to do to start this fire out as you can see I, I have a full split and then like a quarter split that I'm going to set right in the box I'm going to take these unlit coals and evenly scatter them around here I want to get one more full char charcoal chimney Okay, we're going to go ahead and get this thing fired up. So as you can see, it doesn't take too long to uh, light your coals. And you see how that basket's already warping? See that? Don't worry about it, guys. When it cools off, it will straighten up. It'll be fine. I don't recommend using all wood. When I use charcoal, it's fine. Um, so 
Let's go ahead and, uh, here, Vinny, will you take this, please? Don't hurt you. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is make sure you just leave your uh, vents wide open. We're going to let that wood catch a little bit in there. And here I forgot to mention, um, on this Smokey Joe, it's an ash catcher. So even though I have this weed mat, or the weed mat, the um, fire mat here uh, for added protection against my deck, because I don't want to catch them fire, uh, that way I can scrape my ashes right into the barrel and do whatever I got to do. I might have mentioned that before, but I just wanted to be clear on it. So we're just going to let these charcoals catch for a minute before I shut the lids. Okay, what I want to show you here is you can see the smoke coming from the lid here. Okay. And over here, you see it leaking, even though we got the ceiling, but we got to let this thing heat up and let this metal do its magic. Um, I'm going to put some uh, toggle clamps here in the future. Uh, over here, you can see it does leak a little bit. Looks like it's leaking even at that screw. I didn't have that problem with my other one, but everywhere else, you're not going to find a leak anywhere. So, and that's not too big of a deal. And this one here is leaking at the exhaust stack, which the other one did not do. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Like you see, we got some uh, dirty smoke. Well, not really, it's just from the charcoal. Um, I don't even believe the wood is caught yet. But I just wanted to um, show you guys that. Uh, so that way, you know, I have a good idea where to put my clamps when I go to clamp this down to seal off the smoke. And to show you guys, you know, even with the seal, can you imagine if I didn't put the seals on how bad that would leak? So there you have it. So here soon I'm going to go ahead and shut down the lid and let this baby go. I'm going to have the temperatures around 250 to 300, you know, roughly uh, for a few hours. So very important to let you guys know, once this thing starts heating up, uh, see what we're around 100 degrees, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of your oil dripping out. So you want to have some form of a drip bucket or you could buy this one i think it was 20 bucks on amazon uh oklahoma makes it very handy or you can rake something up you know it's got a hook there it's where you can hook whatever you want like a metal pail or you know if you got something laying around or whatnot all right we're about a half an hour in and i just like to show you guys what's going on over here to the right uh you'll see that we're running at approximately 380 degree ish or so and over here, about 310. Each one of them little dots in between are 10 degrees increments. Uh, so yeah, you know, say about a, anywhere between a 20 degree difference. But don't let these top gauges fool you because it's going to be hotter up here. I'm just saying. Uh, over here, I'm running my stack halfway open. I don't like to run them uh, any. You know, if I had to control my temperatures and I had to uh, close this more than halfway. I would just rather come down here and control my temps. So as you can see, it's about a quarter way open or so. Uh, as far as uh, the smoke you see here, I'm very sure that's the paint. Because I could smell the paint burning off this box already. You can already see it. It's pretty much starting to turn colors. But either way, uh, I'd like to show you the inside just within a half an hour. I haven't opened this up yet, but let's just take a look to give you an idea. So, as you can see, it is turning brown, and that's what you want. And very soon, give it some time, and this baby will turn black as can be to a very well-seasoned smoker. Yeah, here's something else I want to tell you guys. Do not, whatever you do, do not touch that door, touch that handle with your bare hands. Get you some, uh, you know, either some hot mitts or, you know, whatever. What I use is this charcoal scraper. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure I got it on Amazon or I might have got it at one of the big box stores or whatever Maybe Home Depot Menards or something uh, And all I do to adjust my vent is just take this very easily. Just move it over Just close it wherever you want. I'm gonna leave it here because that's where it was Getting the temperature and as you can see when I was telling you about you earlier as far as your fire I mean that gap right there is great for the extra airflow Okay, so you don't need to modify the door at all so again, um, if you have to shut your exhaust more than halfway, then uh, I highly recommend uh, adjusting it there at the firebox. Uh, very rare you'll have to shut the whole thing down unless you're just going to kill the fire. Uh,
But anyway, there's just a little update on the Oklahoma Joe build, the seasoning process. Uh, it's going to smoke throughout this entire uh, season because of all the oils in there burning and everything. And I already see one of these gauges fogging up. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Take a look inside the firebox. As you can see, got a nice fire going on there. That wood caught nicely. Yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and close this up. And we're going to let it continue to burn. Like I said, you know, I don't want to go over 300 degrees uh, as much as I can. Uh, oh, and this is what I was going to explain to you. It is hotter on the top. I'm going to go ahead and open this back up. But I'm going to explain to you why. When you, this here side is going to be the hottest, okay? Obviously because your firebox is right there. So you're going to have a lot of radiant heat at the top at these grates right here. And coming over here, it's going to be cooler at the grates here. Because all your heat is mainly rising up to the top. Oops, sorry about that. Rising up to the top and going, you know, and back down into the stack. So naturally you're getting two forms of heat zones. You got the radiant heat from the firebox. Then of course you got it coming back down to enter out the stack. So yeah, there's like uh, four different, you know, cook zones on this thing. So, you know, but it's fine. I like having two different cook zones. Uh, I'm sure there's a mod or something that I could do to it to make it more even, but I, I'm happy with the way it is. So, uh, but anyway, if you guys are enjoying this video on the build of this Oklahoma Joe Longhorn reverse, smoke, reverse flow smoker. Okay. What I'd like to show you here also what you could do, you know, obviously you can adjust your vent. You can also open your firebox, okay? So once you get it open, you'll see when your ashes fall down, you can use this very easily to get in there and to scrape your ashes out when you have them building up. Also, remember, never touch this door because it's freaking hot. And uh, that about wraps it up as far as the firebox. I think that's a, a nice fix. Uh, just getting a, that's a Craftsman, like I said, that's a, a two and a half ton uh, jack stand, and it really holds that thing up nice. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. So, well, there you have it, guys. The Oklahoma Joe Longhorn Reverse Flow Edition, full review. I will definitely be doing more cooks on it, using just wood, using. Just charcoal, tell you my thoughts on that. And so far, the charcoal basket with a full split and then that charcoal basket full three quarters up or two charcoal chimneys is a, a great way to start this thing and maintain even temps. Because like I said before in the video, this thing eats wood bad. And it's it's just a you know thin gauge metal smoker. It's, it was a $600 smoker new. I think that they should have included... Oh, here comes the rain. Uh, like a tool kit and also, um, you know, the, the bucket over here. Either way, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I love this smoker. Uh, do I recommend this to a newbie or even an experienced? Uh, if you don't have a whole lot of money? Yes, absolutely. This thing rocks. Um, I'll get some videos up here. You'll you'll see. I'll be doing a lot of cooks on this. And you guys stay tuned cuz my mobile smoker is just about done. Well, I'm going to say stage 1. There's two stages to this. So, I should have it by the end of the week. Uh I'm super excited. Can't wait. I got a big day coming up June 8th, which is for my kids' uh, graduation party. And I'm also incorporating a barbecue get together as well okay so if you like what you saw please subscribe hit that like button and comment below your thoughts on this whole review uh, if you have any tips or suggestions to offer leave them down below thank you and have a great day